We have spent a large amount of time on Piano's axioms, on Piano's addition and multiplication. And in the last video, I showed you how to uh, prove theorems by um, well, using induction. Now, in this video, I will be introducing you to fields. These are really important. And just before I do that, I thought that it would be uh, good to mention to you that given the, the, the addition and, and the and the multiplication that we were working with uh, in, in the previous uh, lectures. And if we are working in the naturals, we can actually derive some of the usual properties that are common in the in the naturals. Like we could talk about cancellation, cancel, cancellation. And uh, this would be uh, K plus M would be would be equal well, if this was equal to k plus n, then this would imply, and that's what this symbol is for, imply m is equal to n because we just canceled this. And we could have distributivity. And this will be an axiom that I will be talking about uh, later on in this in this video, distributivity. But what I'm saying is th all these are in the naturals. What we will be talking about will be fields. So this will be so so if if we have some number multiplied to another number and th which is being multiplied, this whole thing is being multiplied like this, then we can do we can distribute uh, the n inside and we will have k times n plus m times n and and the cancel so this was cancellation of uh, addition we could have cancellation uh, cancellation of multiplication if if we had so if we had k times m is equal to k times n then you can just divide k from both sides and then you will have m is equal to is equal to n because you can just cross this out so there are many more properties that you could you know you could derive from piano's axioms and from the properties then the, the addition and multiplication of piano and you could spend your time that way however in our course so there are way more so i'm just going to put dot 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 because you can keep going however we are not doing natural analysis we are doing real analysis so um, let's actually move forward with what's important to us because uh, I could spend time proving all of them to you but it would just be a waste of time because uh, our main goal of this course is to work on real on real analysis so let me introduce to you a very very important uh, vital uh, concept of mathematics and that is fields fields so what are fields a field is basically a set of uh, of numbers don't be confused by by this you know you you are you are probably comfortable with the with the with the reals with the naturals then the fields any given field is basically a set right it's a set which has two operations so we denote the field by this symbol it's a double lined f and so i should probably write it in english so a field a field so we give it this symbol f uh is a set of things the reason why I'm not using um, the, the, the numbers here is because you gotta have symbols, right? As long as they meet all of the axioms that I am about to um, lay out for you, then we will call that a field. There are some weird fields and we will talk about uh, my favorite one. I love that. I I love a specific field. I don't think it's a, it, I think it fills a specific axiom, but I thought it would be interesting. So we will be talking about tropical numbers later on in a different video. But for now, you need to know that a field is basically a set of things which, which has two operations. And 
you can almost guess what those operations will be. Operations will be addition and multiplication. So now you may be asking yourself, well, why do we choose these? Why not subtraction or or um, or division? Well, if you think about it, any subtraction, any given subtraction is just addition with a negative number with negative. Think about this. So if, if I give you 2 minus 1, that's the same thing as me saying 2 plus negative 1. You're just adding to a negative number. So there, th th the concept of subtraction is not really, really a concept. It's it's just addition uh, layered into some some other form. So it's you're just doing this and, and, and then you say, oh, well, that's 1. Same thing with division. If if you think about division, let's say we think about the, the, the 3 divided by 5, that's the same thing as me saying 1 over 5 times 3. So you're basically multiplying for, for division. You're just basically multiplying, multiplying by fractions. So in reality, if you really, really think about it, there is no such thing as subtractions and no such thing as division. It's just you are just doing more intricate and a little bit more elaborative uh, addition and multiplication. So in, in this, we will be just saying, and, and, and then we will have a field, which is F, and we will have two uh, operations, normally called binary operations, and, and we will have two elements. And we will have, well, let's say X in, is, is in this and Y, which will be elements of the field. So anything that follows the field axioms that I'm about to give right now will be called a field. Even if it fails one, then it's not a field. So Let's start with the addition field. So these are the axioms. So these are the axioms. In order to be a field, so a field follows, so every single one. There, there can't be an axiom that a field is failing. It needs to be successfully meeting the criteria of a field. And the criteria of a field is, well, to have all of these axioms. So what are these axioms? We have some for addition and we have some for multiplication. So uh, for, for addition, I'm gonna use a plus sign and then I'm, 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 I'm gonna put this in brackets. And then same thing here, a, a, a dot to indicate uh, multiplication. And then I'm gonna enclose that in brackets. So the first one that we have is, it, it's called additive commutativity. Additive commutativity. So how does this work? This says that if we have x and we add it to y, it will be equal to y plus, so y plus x for all x, y, which are elements of the field. So now you may be freaking out. You, you may have seen, you, you see this symbol and you're like, oh my God, what is this? What does this mean? So I talked about this symbol last time in a different video and this means there exists okay so anytime you see this symbol in your head just translate this symbol to there exists so you might be asking why the hell do we use uh, th this symbol instead of writing it well because r just writing the symbol takes less time and less space uh, rather than writing there exists every time so if you don't if, if you have a hard time remembering that this means for there exists how I do it I think about the actual what it says so I look at the e there exists so it's the e that's flipped now for the upside down a what does this mean the upside down a means for all for all or for every actually but I use for all why because it has an a and that makes it easier it makes my life easier in remembering what this symbol means if we have an upside down a just in your head translate this to for all the same way you translate this to like three plus uh, the, 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 if I give you this three plus two in you what, what you're basically doing you're, you're saying three right and you're 
Translating the symbol. This symbol in your head means plus. You're just saying three plus two. You're not saying, whoa, what is this symbol? You're saying three plus two. So if you see these symbols just in your head, just translate this to there exists. And if you see this, then translate this to for all. So the first, the first axiom uh, of, of, of a field is uh, additive commutativity. So I don't have space to write this, but this is commuta, commutativity. Oh, okay, I do have space. Additive. This is additive commutativity. Okay, so I'm not going to write additive every time because all of these are additive because we are talking about the, the addition in this. And I will just write the normal names and the A stands for additive. Okay, additive. So the second axiom is additive associativity. So how does this work? If you have some element, oh, I should probably put a Z in here too. So I'm going to put a Z. A Z is also an element of the field. So I'm choosing three. I'm choosing three numbers. So if you have X plus Y, and this is in brackets, and you add this to plus Z, then this is the same thing as me saying, x plus bracket y plus c and this will be for all for all x y z in the field the third axiom is additive neutral so it's an additive neutral what does this mean is what does this mean sorry this means that you can add this element to anything you want and whatever element you're adding this to, it will still remain the same. So, okay, you're probably like, what did he just say? If if we have, so for, for additive, for for addition, zero is our, uh, the, 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 our additive neutral. This is a part of the field. And how is this? Well, if you add this to any number, to, to x, then you don't change x. x remains x. So this is for all x in the fields in the field then we have uh, additive inverse so this is the method to get to the neutral so how do we do this so if you there always exists so for so for uh, x there exists that's what I'm I'm taking it from here for x there exists for okay for all x, so I should I should write it properly. So I should write it properly. For all x, which are parts part of the field, there exists a negative x in the field such that if you add both of them, x plus negative x, you will get your neutral element. Okay. I I hope these make sense. Now let's move on to, okay, I, this was for addition. All these were for addition. Now let's move on to multiplication. So similar to how the A stood for additive for, for the multiplication, the M stands for multiplicative. So multiplicative commutativity. So let me write that. Multi multiplicative commutativity commutativity so how does this work for multi for for multiplicative commutativity if you have the x and you multiply with y then that is the same as me saying y times x for all for all x y which are elements of the field the second axiom so if you if you notice these are just parallels of each other you're just changing you're just changing the operation it's basically the same thing so multiplicative uh, associativity multiplicative associativity you will have that if you have x and you're multiplying this by y and you put this in brackets and you multiply the whole thing by Z, this will be the same thing as me saying X times 
y times z. And <laughs> I used z and z to be equal to both pronunciations of the letter, so just so you don't get mad. And we would have for all x, y, z, which are elements of the field. So everything that we are talking about is basically a description of how elements work in, in fields. And the third one, again, if you if you will notice, these are just, you're just mirroring commutativity, commutativity, associativity, associativity, and you can almost guess what the next one will be. It will be multiplicative neutral. So one is an element of the field. Okay, let me, it's white. So one is an element of the field, field, uh, which implies that if you take one and you multiply by an element, then you will still have your element for all, for all x's in the field. And lastly, you can, I know you can guess this, we will have a multiplicative inverse. So for, for all x in existing in the field, there exists a x inverse. So just to do justice to this right here. So x inverse is me saying one over x. So <clears throat> there, so for all x which exist or are elements of the field, there exists an x inverse such that, such that uh, x times x inverse will give you your neutral element for multiplication, which is one. So I just copy pasted all of the axioms from the previous slide. And as I was saying, the last axiom that connects and uh, fulfills uh, the, 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 the fields, right? And the last axiom that has to be has to be successfully completed in order for some set to be called a field is distributivity. And, and we denote it with a D. And this basically is a connective tissue between addition and, and, and multiplication. So how does this work? If we have some sort of number and we multiply it by two other numbers and we, which are being added, then this should be equal to me saying X multiplied by the first number and that added to x multiplied by the second number. And of course, for all, for all x, y, z, which are elements of the field. Now, uh, let's use green. If, and only if, so actually, let me use it with, 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 let me make it into a, into a statement. That's a field. So a set is a field if and only if, so how many do we have? We have eight here, so four here, four here, and nine. So a set is is a field if and only if all nine all nine field axioms are satisfied are satisfied this is really really important even if one axiom fails, then the set that you have been given cannot be given the name of a field. Again, I will repeat this because this is important. If you don't understand this, then you can watch the video a little bit more slowly or pause at the places where you might be confused. If, if for any reason, if for any reason, let's say this axiom fails, then whatever set you're trying to prove or you're, you have been given cannot be called a field field. And I don't like the cross on that. So I'm just going to take that back. But I hope this video made sense to you. And in the next video, we will explore the world of fields because in real analysis, that's what real number system is because a real number system is indeed a field.